So, starting with questions from the most recent assignment. Anj, 55. All right, so in 55, it asks to determine whether this point lies on this line. So the easiest way to do that is we're going to see if the, when we solve for t with the x coordinate and then with the y coordinate, if we get the same value for t. If we get the same value for t, stop talking please, then this point would lie on this line. If the values of t disagree, then no, that point wouldn't lie on the line. So let's see, if I do that, I get uh, negative 4. And then that's going to be negative 12 divided by 3 is also negative 4. So yes, that point would lie on the line. Is that cool there? Yeah. You're welcome. Annika? All right. Uh, stop talking, please. 67 says... Find the slope-intercept form for the following lines given as vectors. Okay. So here we're given our vector line equation in linear combination form. Um, so it's easy enough to take this and convert it back into our traditional form and then in that form it's very easy to see what's going on. So the part with the t should be the negative 2 and the positive 3. The negative 2 is the x because it's coming with the i vector and the positive 3 is the y because it's coming with the j vector, then we can say the same thing for our point vector. So we know our slope is 3 over negative 2 and our point is 1 negative 2. So plugging this in, to my slope intercept equation. If I add 3 over 2 to both sides, um, that's going to give me negative 1 half for b. So I have y equals negative 3 over 2x minus 1 half. Is that okay, Annika? Yeah. So just remember that the i's are the x's and the j's are the y's. Okay. Um, who else? Uh, Kyo. 53 says... Uh, to find a possible vector line equation in IB component form for the following lines given in slope intercept form. So to do this we need a point vector. So the point vector I would use would just be the y-intercept. And then I need a slope vector. So remember the slope is 
change in y over change in x. So the denominator would be the x-coordinate and the numerator would be the y-coordinate. And since the slope is negative, I just need to attach the negative sign to either of these two coordinates. It doesn't matter which one you attach it to. I'll just attach it to the first one for um, argument's sake. So then putting this into the proper form, we have this. I guess I probably should have written that more clearly to write it as a vector rather than the point. But that's it. Cool with that, Michael? Okay. So not much to do on those, right? Um, last call on questions for you guys. Cool beans, daddy -os. Of course, just stand up and do it, man. Uh, so today we'll start talking about sections 8, 6, and 7. So in 8, 6, we're going to be discussing three-dimensional vectors. There's three forms that we generally will write our vectors in. So the first one is in component form. So just like for two-dimensional vectors, when we write component form, we write the wedged brackets, and then we list the components. So in three dimensions, we have three components, because remember that what the component form is, it's describing you the initial point and terminal point of that vector. The initial point is always the origin, and the terminal point is always, in this case, ABC. Everybody's okay with that idea? Um, similarly speaking, we have the IB component form, which is the same idea. We've just written it as a column vector rather than a row vector. And the third way is the linear combination form where we're going to use the unit vectors i, j, and k in this case, where i is the unit vector in the x direction, j is the unit vector in the y direction, and k is the unit vector in the z direction. So again, that first one is component form, the second one is IB component form, and the third one is linear combination form. It's just the names we give to those guys. Um, suppose that we have two points. The first point is A at 3, 8, negative 4. And the second point is B at negative 5, negative 6, positive 1. And we want to write the vector AB. If this is a two-dimensional problem, how would we do this? Good, so it will take the terminal point and subtract from it the initial point. This is also called head minus tail, is the way that we call this. And it's going to work the same way in three dimensions, just we have three components. So which of these two points, A or B, is the uh, terminal or the head of our arrow? B. How can you tell? Because the head of the arrow is above the B, right? Okay, so I'll do negative 5 minus 3, 
negative 6 minus 8, positive 1 minus negative 4. So my component form vector is negative 8, negative 14, positive 5. Uh, I could write this in IB component form by writing what? That's the linear combination form. The, yeah, the IB component form is just using it as a column. And then the linear combination form would be 8i, or I'm sorry, negative 8i, minus 14j plus 5k. So depending on the form that you're asked for your answer, um, you could report it in any one of these three. To do the arithmetic, it seems to me it makes the most sense just to use component form. Um, everybody okay there? Uh, what if I wanted also the magnitude of this vector? In two dimensions, how do we calculate the magnitude of the vector? Yeah, square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared, right? If we have three dimensions, uh, nope, you just have a x squared plus y squared plus z squared. because it's still a distance. You're still operating in like a normal metric space where the distance between two points is still, still a distance. So when you do that, oops, I think you get 269 when you do that. Everybody okay there? Okay. Uh, so the other thing that we often asked in two dimensions was going to be the direction of the vector. So in two dimensions, we describe the direction of the vector using an angle inside of the unit circle. If we extend this to three dimensions, what are we talking about, though? <laughs> so in two dimensions, our angle is defined inside of a unit circle. In three dimensions, it would be defined inside of a unit sphere. To describe an angle inside of a sphere, you actually need two measurements. This is kind of beyond the scope of what we're trying to do, so we're not going to worry about this. So we're not going to worry about that. Um, if you're actually like navigating on Earth, this is actually a very relevant problem, like if you're an airline pilot or a navigator on an airplane. Um, and the two measurements that you're going to use to describe that are going to be similar to like your latitude and longitude, where it takes two measurements to describe your position on the Earth. Same kind of idea here if you're talking about describing an angle inside of a sphere. It's going to take two measurements to do that. Um, now, it's, the measurements aren't necessarily latitude and longitude, but it's like an analogous idea that you need two measurements in order to do that. Um, okay, let's look at a different example here. Suppose we have the vector u. And we have the vector v. And we want to find what 2u 
plus v is, I'm going to call that vector w just to give it a name. So when we were working with two-dimensional vectors, how did we do something like two times a vector? You multiplied it to both components. In three dimensions, what do you suppose we're going to do? Yeah, just going to multiply to the three components. So there's that. And then I'm going to convert vector v into component form rather than writing it in linear combination form. I suppose you could have taken vector 2u and written that in as a linear combination form and done it that way too, but I think components is just less symbols to write down, so that's I prefer that mode form personally, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, if I were to add two vectors in two dimensions, how did we do that? You added the x's and you added the y's, right? What do you suppose we're going to do in three dimensions? Yeah, we're going to add the x's, the y's, and then the z's, right? Does everybody feel okay there? Okay. Um, what if we asked you to then graph that vector w? So when we have a vector in component form like w, the initial point is the origin, and the terminal point is going to be the point 3, 2, 5, right? So I'm going to start by graphing that point 3, 2, 5. Everybody okay with that plan? All right. So I'll start by making like three tick marks on my x-axis, the positive end of my x-axis. Remember this part of the dotted line in the um, lower left here is like the part that's pointing out of the board straight at you guys. And the part in the upper right is the part that's like going behind the board into Miss Garcia's room. Because you remember this is a three-dimensional picture so you have to like look at it magic eye style and hopefully get it to pop for you. I'll draw two tick marks on the y-axis, or the positive end of the y-axis, and then five tick marks on the positive end of the z-axis. So again, remember this is x, y, and then z. Everybody good there? Okay. I'm going to start by drawing a line that's starting from that last tick mark I put on the x-axis that's parallel to the y-axis. Everybody good there? Now I'm going to go to the last tick mark on the y-axis and draw a line that's parallel to the x-axis that intersects that line we did before. And what this is going to describe is like the bottom of my box that I'm going to be graphing. So I have like four little intersections there, right? Everybody good with that? Now I'm going to go to the intersection that occurs at the origin. And I'm going to go up five units. I'm going to go to the other uh, point on the y-axis. I'm going to go up five units. And then I'm going to go to the other two corners of that, uh, the bottom of that box, and go up five units. Now this I have to just kind of eyeball a little bit, but you know, you do the best you can.
and then we can draw the rest of our box. Now, in two dimensions, if I were just graphing the point 3, 2, that would be this point right here. Everybody agree with that? So if I extend this up into three dimensions, it would be this point here that I'm interested in. So my vector is going to be going from the origin to that point there. Is everybody okay with that idea? And we have, I have some opportunity for you to practice graphing these kind of things again today to get a little bit better at uh, doing this on your own. So I have some practice for you scheduled today that you can work on because I know that this skill is maybe not super comfortable right away. Um, just make sure that you're consistently trying to remind yourself that this is three-dimensional and you have to look at it in three dimensions. If you try to look at it like it's flat, it doesn't make a lot of sense. If you kind of squint at it and like see it kind of coming up out of the piece of paper for you, things it's a little bit easier to tell what's going on and I think makes life make a little bit more sense, but it requires a little bit of imagination on your point. Or your part. Okay, so the second thing we're going to talk about today are 3D is the 3D version of the vector equation for a line. So remember in two dimensions, this was our vector equation for a line, where r naught was the point vector, and vector v was the slope vector. Now, how did we find slope again? Just going back to your Algebra 1 class. Rise over run, right? The change in y is over the change in x. If we're in three dimensions, what would slope be? Ew, that doesn't really make a lot of sense now, right? So we're not going to be able to use a slope vector in three dimensions because there really isn't a thing called slope in three dimensions. Um, but what the slope vector is really describing for us is just the direction. So if we think about this from a three-dimensional stand or a 2D, 2D standpoint, here's our point. And what the slope vector does is it says from that point, you're going to go like, you know, some over and some up. And it tells us how to kind of draw the line, right? Everybody kind of agree with that? So really, what that slope vector is giving us is just the direction. So in 3D, still going to use a point vector. But now instead of using a slope vector, we're going to use something more general called a direction vector. But really the slope vector is still describing the direction of the line. Right? Slope still does that. It's just a, a little bit more specific version of direction. But really any direction is going to be fine. It doesn't matter how long that direction vector is. As long as it's describing the same direction as the slope vector, it's, it's fine. It's fine. So let's look at an example here. Okay. 
uh, let's say we have the point, oops, 5, negative 2, 6, and the point negative 3, 4, 1. And we want to find an equation between these two points. Everybody okay with that plan? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of these two points to be my point vector. So it doesn't really matter which one I pick. And then for my direction vector, I'm going to pick either the vector AB or the vector BA. Again, it doesn't really matter which one I pick. For the sake of this example, let's use the point A for my point vector and the vector AB as my direction vector. But certainly any combination of these answers is a reasonable answer and is correct. So to find the vector AB, well, let's do it this way. I'm going to take my terminal point and subtract from it my initial point. Everybody okay there? So my final answer then is r equals the point vector plus the direction vector times t. Pretty easy, right? Not a big deal. So what if we wanted to check to see if a point lies on a line in three dimensions? What did we do for two dimensions? Ange just asked about this in the, during the homework. Right, you just see if they're equal to each other. So I take the x and see if it's equal to negative 3 plus t. I take the y and see if it's equal to 12 plus 3t. And then I take the 11 and see if that's equal to 7 plus negative 2t. And since they all gave me the same value for t when I solved them, I would say yes, that point is on the line. If any of the t's disagree, we'd say no, that point isn't on the line. Is everybody okay there? This is where we're going to stop here for today.